Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the Menger sponge. So what is the Menger sponge? The Menger sponge is a fractal, which is a pattern that is self-similar across different scales, meaning that however much you zoom in, you will see the same pattern over and over again. And it was first described by Carl Menger in 1926, and that's where the Menger name comes from. But I'm not actually sure where the sponge names comes from, because whenever I think about this shape, it feels to me, I always think of it as this rock solid metal piece of cube. Now let's look at how we're going to construct this shape. So first, we're going to start with a cube. And then we're going to divide every face of the cube into 9 squares. This subdivides the cube into 27 smaller cubes. So basically, we're going to cut the big cube into 3 in all directions. And then we're going to remove the smaller cube in the middle of each face and remove the smaller cube in the center of the more giant cube, leaving 20 smaller cubes. So we're going to cut through the core in all directions. And then in the last step, we're going to repeat steps 2 and 3 for each of the remaining smaller cubes and continue to iterate at infinitum to infinity. All right, and we're going to do this using recursion. Because the Menger sponge is a three-dimensional shape, we need to start by changing the rendering mode from 2D to 3D, and we can do that by providing a third argument inside the create canvas function, webgl. Then now, I'm going to use a function called box to create our first sponge, and I'm going to put in an argument for the size. I'm going to set this variable size to be the size of how about it's going to be half of the size of our width. All right, and I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to put in no fill, and then I'm going to call this function orbit control. And this function allows us to move around the three-dimensional shape with the mouse. Perfect. Next, what we're going to do is that we're going to cut this sponge into 27 cubes, right? So we're going to do it in three in all directions. So what I'm going to do first is that I'm going to call a nested for loop. So let's just do one nested for loop that goes from i equals to negative 1 to i less than 2, i plus plus. And the reason that it goes from negative 1 to 2 is because I want to have a variable that goes from negative 1 to 0 to 1 so that we can find the position of where I want the center of each of the cubes to be. And it goes from negative 1 to 1 because the center one is at 0. As you can see here, the shape is in the middle of the canvas, meaning that the origin point is at the middle of the canvas, right? And so if I do this and then I called box again, but the size has to be what? It has to be a third of the original size, right? And if I click run now, you only see one box in the center of the canvas. And that is because we cannot actually provide the X and Y or Z coordinate in this WebGL mode. What we need to do is that we need to use a translate function to translate the origin point around before we draw the cube. So I'm going to use a translate function and we're going to translate it to these locations. So let's set x to be equals to i times s, and then y to be equals to 0 for now, because we only have one loop. So let's do x and y here. And then as you can see, we only see two boxes, and that is because we forgot two important functions, push and pop, when we do any kind of transformations. Push basically saves the transformation, which is translating it to this new location x and y, and then pop returns it back to the original settings, which is where the origin point is at the center of the canvas before we call the transformation or the translate function again. So if I put pop here, then now we see three cubes. And because we're only doing this in the x direction, how about we put in two more loops. So from j equals to negative 1 to j less than 2, j plus plus, and then another one from k equals to negative 1 to k less than 2, 
K plus plus, and then I'm gonna put all of this inside here. And I actually can just put this size outside of the for loop because the size remains the same throughout. And then now y will be equals to j times s and z will be equals to k times s. And then we can just translate it to x, y, and z. And now we have 27 cubes. But with the mender sponge, the third step is that we need to cut through the middle here, right? The core in all directions. So how about we first, let's delete this big one. And then I'm going to fill it with the color white. Now, we're going to put in a conditional statement that says if i is equals to 0, right? So this is i equals to negative 1, i equals to 0, and then i equals to 1, right? Same thing for the j and k direction. So we want the middle one, which is when i equals to 0 and j equals to 0. So let's just do one side first. So when these are true, we don't want to do anything, right? But else, then we want to draw the box. So let's try that. Okay, so now it is cut in one direction. Next, we want to put another set of parentheses here. And then we say, or then we can just copy this. What do we want? So another side would be I and K. And then now this top one is also cut. And then we'll do the last one, which is when J equals zero and K equals to zero. All right, and now we have the first level of the major sponge. Next, we're going to write a recursive function. And a recursive function has three main properties. The first one is that it needs to call on itself. The second one is that it needs to have a base condition. And this is the condition that will tell us to exit out of the recursive function. And the third one is that it needs to work towards the base condition so that we ensure that we get out of this recursive function and are not inside this infinite loop. So what we're going to do is that we're going to write a function and I'm going to call this function menger sponge. All right. How about we start by writing a base condition? So we're going to say that if level is equal to zero, then we're just going to draw the big box, right? The big sponge. So let's just draw a box at a size called size here. And I'm going to provide that as an argument size and level. And then else, what we're going to do is that we're going to copy and paste this set of code here. So how about I also declare level at zero. And then inside draw, what we're going to do is that we're going to call the minger sponge function recursive function, right? And we're going to call it at size equals to the original size of width divided by two and at level, which I set at zero. One thing that I need to change inside this function here is that inside the else function here, instead of drawing the box here, we're going to be calling the minger sponge function, right? And what are we going to provide as the arguments? We need to provide size and level. And we're going to provide S here, right? Which is going to be the third of the size in each of the levels. So we're going to do S. And then we're going to put in level minus 1. And that is because we need to work towards the base condition. So that eventually will exit out of this loop. Let's try that. So at level equals to zero, we just have one big sponge. At level equals to one, looks promising. Two, ta-da, all right, three, there you go, four. 
and now it's slowing down a lot. Okay, one thing you could do is instead of having it loop through the draw function several times, we could do no loop. And because I used orbit control, now we will not be able to control it anymore because the draw function is only called once. We could actually have it rotate. How about x uh, by 15 degrees? And then let's do y by 45 degrees. And because I'm using the degrees mode, let's also set angle mode to degrees. All right, it's still quite slow because this is a lot of computation, but you can see this really cool major sponge shape at level equals to four. So this is one of the fractal shapes that I find very interesting. I hope you have fun and give this one a try.